Before we continue with the chassis, I want to say thank you to everyone who gave me some advice down in the comments or contacted me directly. It genuinely helped me improve my welding. Now I'm still learning and have a long way to go, but just to put everyone's mind at rest, this is my car and I have no plans on selling it. Any mistakes I make can always be revisited or redone if necessary. If there is something I don't think I can do, I have no shame in getting a professional in to make sure the job is done right. Speaking of getting the job done right, I've been in contact with E30 Garage Norway, and after much super helpful back and forth, I've got at least 10 panels on the way, including the two front lifting points, a tail panel, a battery tray, and pretty much one for every bad area on the car. If you want to repair an E30 properly, this is the company you need to go to. The beginning of this episode was filmed before I spoke to E30 Garage Norway. This area is now going to be replaced with a panel, but I thought I might as well show you what I did, just so you can see how terrible I am now, compared to hopefully the future me. I could have left this out, but not a lot of people show themselves learning to weld like this, and I know this is something I'd like to watch, so here it is. I'm using the RAW 250MI MIG welder from unionmart.co.uk. Thanks to those guys for supporting the channel. A link to the welder is in the description. At this point, I had the C25 all hooked up and flowing, but forgot to swap the flux core out for solid wire. Here I am trying to run beads of weld and it just wasn't working out. I knew something wasn't right. I accidentally got a massive reel of solid wire which didn't fit into my little welder. So I unraveled the flux core onto another now useless flux core to get a small spool and then took some of the solid wire from the large one. I removed my first attempt and tried again using for the first time the correct setup. Firstly I wanted to sort out the bad cutting I'd done by filling in the cutting lines in the corners. Other serials are available, and my camera died, which is why we just skipped ahead a little bit. I really didn't help myself here. The piece I made didn't fit well enough. I was fighting with gaps that were just too big. I also don't think I had the welder turned up enough, as the beads were pretty high. So the grinder got a good workout here. I really wasn't happy with it. So after talking with E30 Garage Norway, I was glad to find out that they do make this piece as a whole panel and it's now on its way to me. This whole area is also going to be replaced with a panel. Again, at the time I didn't know it could be done, so I was going to try and do these bad spots myself. Doing this made me want to remove all of the undercoating, have a good look at the body, and reapply a new undercoating with the air gun applicator. So expect to see that job in a future episode.
So after talking panels, it was time to focus on the areas that didn't need one or where one wasn't available. In the first episode, I blasted this area, which had three rust spots in it. There isn't a panel for the top of this part like there is for the sides, both of which are on the way. So I got to work on making three new pieces before I cut out the rusted spots. Again, don't worry, I thoroughly removed the plating on this metal before welding it. Whilst I cut and shape these pieces, I want to talk about something a few of you mentioned in the comments on the first episode. Because the chassis was blasted, one, yes there is loads of glass everywhere, and two, the factory e-coating was removed during the process. Once I've done most, if not all of the welding, I will have the chassis cleaned out and dipped to remove the primer and any surface rust that got in when the rain got to it. And before I add the new undercoating, a fresh e-coat will be added. I still have to find a place to do all of this, but I'm sure I will. With the new pieces ready to go in, I firstly drilled out the spot welds using a centre punch and a normal drill bit. I then used a spot weld splitter to separate the two pieces so I could more easily cut only one half. But before we carry on, a quick word from our sponsor, Get Roman. Quite worryingly, erectile dysfunction is more common than you might think. A whopping 52% of men over the age of 40 experience ED at some point. Even worse, roughly 75% of those guys don't seek treatment. That's why Get Roman has made it easy to chat with a doctor online. With Roman, you can get medical care for ED from the comfort and privacy of your own home, so you can handle everything online in a convenient, discreet manner. Getting started is simple. Just go to getroman.com forward slash restore and complete an online visit. If your doctor decides that the treatment would be appropriate, they can prescribe genuine medicine that can be delivered in discreet packaging right to your door with free two-day shipping. So come on boys, talk to the doctor. ED can be a tough one to tackle, but it's really important to get checked out. With Roman, it's easy to connect with a doctor. Thanks to Get Roman for supporting the channel. Let's get back to the chassis. I started by cutting these pieces out with the rotary tool and a small cutting disc, as I thought it would be a good way to go about it. But I quickly realized it wasn't the best idea. I then remembered I had a Chicago pneumatics reciprocating air saw that I got ages ago. This was much faster and left a much thinner cutting line. I do, however, need much practice with it.
With the three holes cut and the pieces ready, I fitted them with magnets and put on my new speedy glass helmet, which I'm hoping will also improve the welds. I'll show you these four tack welds in real time with no cuts, just to show you how long it takes me. These aren't perfect welds, but they are much better than my previous ones. I've cut out most of the time spent waiting for it to cool down and cutting the wire pretty much every time I stop and start welding. Again, not the best world ever, still quite high, I think I need to turn the welder up a little more. After plug welding the back of the second piece, I took a break for lunch and came back to finish the last one. When I came back, I felt like I got worse, which is why I think this one turned out the way it did. Overall, I was pretty happy with this. It's pretty much the best welding I've done so far. Embarrassing as that is, I'm still happy.
Thankfully, flat discs and grinders exist. It was getting too late in the day to use power tools, so I sealed it overnight with some zinc primer. The next morning I finished it off. I tried going as easy as I could with the grinder, but made a few hot spots in the process. This job was done by a previous owner or a garage that had been asked to do it. I don't know how this piece is sitting below the rest of the metal. Do you think this was a mistake or on purpose? To finish these patches off, I cleaned the area with silicon remover and sealed it temporarily with zinc primer. Moving on from this area to the back seat where two panels meet. I wanted to try the plasma again just because it's so fun. It kind of worked, but I don't think I had a good enough ground to get a consistent cut. I'm not sure. It's another new thing I need practice with. I decided I would use the reciprocating saw and set about making the replacement pieces. The problem I was having was figuring out the best way to get the saw bit in to start cutting. If you've got any good ideas I'd love to hear them. This time I decided to drill a hole in each of the corners just big enough to get the blade in. Once the bad bit was cut out, I cleaned the surrounding area of paint and undercoating. I gave the pieces a final test fit and then welded the bottom one in.
It was quite an awkward place to weld. I had both arms through the back window, standing on some steps. Before welding in the second piece, I drilled three holes in it so I could plug weld through to the bottom piece. I still think I should have turned the welder up even higher for this. Next episode I hope to see flatter welds. For now, I'm making my way through flap discs like there's no tomorrow. I'd made enough noise for one day, so again I sealed it overnight and came back to do more grinding the next day. So there we go, a good bit of progress made on the areas that needed it, and a lot of panels are now on the way, which will hopefully save me a lot of time. Once all of the welding is done, I will take the car to the garage it's going to be painted at, and do a final flap disc of all of the welds. I'm trying to make as little noise as possible here at the workshop. Join me next time when I remove these leaking lap welds and plan for the new panels. Thanks for watching, see you then.